Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about uh, some tambourine techniques with an etude that I've written for my percussion education class and my students at the college. Now, if you're seeing this on YouTube, I've decided to share it on that format as well. So I wrote this etude to deal with my phobia of tambourine when I was a student in college. I was afraid of tricky tambourine parts. It's a very uh, complicated instrument and a lot of things can go wrong. So I wrote this etude thinking that if I can do all these things, I'll never have any problems with the tambourine part again. And it worked. So I'm sharing this with you now. And this is part of a book that I'm doing on uh, tambourine, uh, piatti, which is crash cymbals, suspended cymbal, castanets, triangle, and some other things that I do in the orchestra that I play in. And that will be out probably within a year or so. So uh, the tambourines I'm going to use today are from different manufacturers. This one is a black swamp tambourine. I put a new head on it because I didn't like the head it came with. And uh, this is a goatskin head, and it's got some beeswax on there, as you can see. And that's to facilitate thumb roll. The jingles are chromium bronze. This other tambourine that you saw me play a couple bars on is a Grover German silver tambourine two rows and it's another good tambourine it's got the original head I have several of these they all sound a little bit different now a tambourine I wanted to show you that I'm not go I'm going to use today in the solo but I want you to be aware of is a single row Grover and this is a much lighter tambourine and I use this when I play with small orchestras or just ensembles that I don't need a lot of volume so it's got less volume and it's much lighter because it's a single row instrument. So it's good to have several different tambourines so you have different timbres uh, for different pieces. So if you're playing a piece by Ravel, you might want to use a brighter tambourine. If you're doing Prokofiev for something, you might want to use a darker tambourine. It's all about color and matching with the orchestra. Now I've uh, published two tambourine videos on YouTube. Uh, one is about the basic techniques, and then the other is about some esoteric techniques. And we're going to kind of hit on that today. So let's talk about this etude, and we'll go through it, and measure by measure or section by section, and I'll show you how I'm doing these pieces, uh, or these parts of the, um, of the piece. So the piece begins by holding the tambourine like this, and we talked about that in my other videos, and you want to hold it at a slight angle so it sounds a little more live. So a comparison would be this, that's live, and this, that's dry. So flat the jingles rest down at rest, and here they're suspended. So I'm going a, pretty much halfway in between that to play these roles. So the first couple bars sound like this. And you'll see I'm using a flat fist on that accented note. And it's dry. That's marcato. You see that accent there. So, uh, and I'm holding it flat, the tambourine flat, so it doesn't ring. Because, again, I want it dry. The very next bar uses thumb rolls because the dynamic is mezzo piano. So, Now there, for that accented note, I'm using the heel of my hand, all right? If you play congas, then you, you know that that heel is here. And that's how you do that accent. If you do a, a finger roll, or you can use your leg, although that's a little too loud for this particular two measures. All right, so there's always several ways to do these things. But in this case, I'm doing it like this. And the very next two bars, or you know, next bar, these are accented thumb rolls that get louder. All right, now when you accent the thumb roll, you attack it from above like this. kind of like diving into it and they get 
consecutively louder. Now that last note there, that's called a flip. So if I'm playing something up here and I need to get the tambourine flipped so that I can play this stuff, then what I have to do is turn it over without making this sound because that's disruptive. So to do that, your last note that you hit, that becomes part of the flip of the tambourine. And then I'm ready to do this next part. So this next part, which starts at bar seven, is the knee fist approach. And K would equal knee, F would equal fist. You don't have to use your fist, you can use your finger as a pointer there. Or your fist. And remember, it's a flat fist, it's not like this. It's this, okay? You could start either with your knee or your fist there. It's up to you. If you start with your knee, there might be some residual jingle on the tambourine, like that. To get rid of that or to minimize it, use a stiff arm, so. That's the key to fixing that. Now you'll notice that I play a lot with my left hand, the thumb rolls and I hold the tambourine in my right hand. You have to be ambidextrous if you play tambourine. I went over this in those other videos. But for this particular etude, most of the hard work is done holding the tambourine in my right hand because it's kind of exhausting. It's a heavy instrument and your strong hand should do that. So it's good to learn how to do thumb rolls with your left hand. And here, the right hand's bearing the brunt of the exertion. So that really helps. And then all my left hand has to do is act as a barrier. So here's that line. So you see there how I'm moving my arm up and down like this, all right? So it's a little, little arm, it's a little bit of wrist. With a lighter tambourine, you could use more wrist, but for the louder stuff, use your arm. Now for this next line, we get into this part where I am changing over to the tambourines. So the first two bars are this triplet figure. And on those accents, you are gonna to wanna to use more wrist. And then the next bar is this. So there, what I'm doing is I am just hitting the tambourine on my knee like this. Which is actually harder than it looks to do that with your wrist and keep it even. And as I'm doing that, I'm picking up this other tambourine because that's the tambourine that's gonna play the shake roll. Because the shake roll is important to cover this when I move the tambourine and put it right there. Okay, so that's the purpose of that. So we'll just play that for you from the third bar of line three. And then we're into the next part. So you see why it's important to know how to do a shake roll with your left hand. Now I've done pieces like this where I have to switch to different techniques and you can have another tambourine and use that uh, for doing that method. So now we come to the part which everybody asks me about. And for this, I'm taking the tambourine and I'm putting it in kind of a notch in my thigh between my belt line and my thigh. And it just goes in there. It has nothing to do with being fat. Thank you. It just has everything to do with locking it in there. And then it doesn't move, okay? And most everybody I've taught this to can do it uh, as long as I show them how to do it. Everybody's got different body types. Sometimes really, really, really skinny folks have a hard time. But again, it's not really about fat. It's just about getting it tucked in to right below your belt line and squeezing it in there. And then you have a, a mounted drum, like it's a snare drum, and you could do anything on it. So in this case, I'm doing these eighth notes.
Now you also see I'm doing thumb rolls with my right hand there too, so like this. So it's possible to do a continuous roll like that, a soft roll, but uh, on your knee like that, locked in. All right, so that's how you do that. And if you can do this, you can probably play just about any part that's soft. I used to practice the Anthony Cerrone book, Portraits and Rhythm, like this. I'd play the whole book and, you know, think about ways I could do it, like a, with like a snare drum. And all the rolls would take place like this. Just crisscrossing. It's hard. That crossover is difficult to get even. So once you're done with that section, you get to this uh, part at bar 39 where you're lifting the tambourine off of your leg slowly. So you have this. Now those flams are done like this. Heel, toe. So... And then the drags, after that, I do like this. All right, it's kind of like the Pandero technique. This obviously isn't a, a Brazilian Pandero, but we're playing samba for so that up-down stroke. Okay, not too difficult. And then we come to a pretty hard part of the piece, the last line. So here I'm attacking the shake roll, and I'm playing a thumb roll right after it to try to get it to tie in. Now this technique is extremely handy if you're playing pieces like by Ravel where uh, he writes a lot of tambourine rolls that they'll go with the winds, the winds will be going blah, 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 and they get really, really softer. And a piece like La Valse uses that. And so you might be playing a loud tambourine roll, but there's a huge decrescendo over a couple bars. So what do you do? You can do this, but usually it'll just pitter out. You can only play so soft like that. So what I do is I play a thumb roll like this. Okay, once again, and just fade it just like that. So that works really, really well, and our conductors always seem to be happy with that. So that's pretty much it for this etude. It is difficult. It's going to take you a little while to learn it, but once you do, you'll, you should have a lot more confidence in the tambourine. Uh, if you play with an orchestra or a band, uh, wind ensemble, any kind of any kind of gig, a lot of theater shows use a lot of tambourine these days, a lot of hard little licks you got to play. So if you can do this, you can pretty much do just about anything. So I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.